in questo tempo. At a time like this, when the boat of humanity, tossed by the storm of the current crisis, struggles to advance toward a more calmer and more serene horizon, the rudder of human dignity and the compass of fundamental social principles can enable us together to steer a sure course. As Christians, we should always look to Our Lady, Star of the Sea and Mother of Hope. May we work together to advance towards a new horizon of love and peace, of fraternity and solidarity, of mutual support and acceptance. May we never yield to the presentation to disregard others, especially those in greatest need, Uh, to look the other way instead. May we strive daily in concrete and practical ways to form a community composed of brothers and sisters who accept and care for one another. From the Vatican, December 8, 2020, Pope Francis. Good day to everyone. Happy New Year this year. It is not possible to march together for peace. But we know that there is a lot of need for peace in the world. And this is why we do not resign to war. We do not want to leave peace to violence. And in this 1st of January, World Day of Peace, we leave a space in our heart to words of peace. It will be a virtual march with different steps that we begin by listening to the words of the President of the Community of Sant'Egidio, Marco Impagliazzo. Good day and Happy New Year. The year that begins, the 2021, opens with the good news of the COVID-19 vaccine. A vaccine that was uh, never achieved so quickly and so widely. It is the fruit of a common effort that foreshadows a new time to face together. And we have also hope that the vaccine may be for everyone and may reach everyone. Never as the year that has passed we've understood how the entire humanity is on the same boat and faces together the sea of life in the good or in evil. If we really think about it, there is an intimate solidarity between human beings in suffering as well as in hope. If someone suffers from war, it means that sooner or later everyone will suffer from it. We all suffer. Consequently, everyone must be aware of it and we should be involved in bringing war to an end. And the initiative of today, it works in this direction. As you know, unfortunately, Also this year, war has not disappeared from the world, on the contrary. However, in spite of the attitude, some lights in the darkness have been seen. Step forwards in the peace agreement for South Sudan were done here in this very room in Santa Gidio, as well as the agreements between some Arab countries and Israel. They are a sign that peace is always possible, even when war has been going on for a long time. This shows what our commitment could be, to always make the voice of the reason for peace heard, because peace is also reasonable beside human, and never accept that it is voice to be silent, because there can always be someone who listens to this voice, even when we do not believe it is possible. Giving voice to peace is our commitment to fraternity among all. It is the theme of Pope Francis' encyclical Fratelli Tutti, the urgency that a voice of peace always be present so that it could be heard. We have served it also in everyday life, not only in the great international issues. If in a city, War is waged against someone, between brackets, that is, we insult them, we humiliate, we marginalize them, for example against a minority, or for religious or ethnical reasons, or against the class, or against the poor. The city itself splits, it becomes divided, and it becomes poorer. 
inside this city, the voices of peace must be resounded so that someone may listen to it and may restore hope. In our experience of a community, we understood that just a few hearts that are in solidarity, united together by the voice of peace, so that war may be a may go away and hatred disappear. For this reason, in order to prepare a future of peace for everyone, including ourselves, we need to make this voice, the voice of peace, heard everywhere. This is the reason why, the, great, the most important reason why we're celebrating today, virtually, of course, because of COVID-19, the Peace Day 2020, together with Pope Francis and to all the Church. This day was called by Pope Paul VI in 1968. These are many years that we gather in the name of peace, and we are not tired of doing it. In order to remember to everyone and to ourselves more that it's worth talking about peace, it is worthwhile fighting for peace in the hearts of all men and women all over the world. Just talking about peace, the word peace, it frees us from powerlessness, it frees us from loneliness and violence. Our goal is clear, never to forget the value of peace, but also transform the love of peace into a continuous narration that brings men and women closer together, thus defeating in their spirit or rancor animosity and fear. Let me say, we, there, there should all be, there must be like a parable of peace that every day is told to everyone, that is told everyone as an utopian that defeats harsh realism, an utopia that gives back courage to the disappointed and strengthens the disaffected and the young. Every day we must say that peace is needed to, for a better life, and peace must always be possible. It is beautiful that with this peace, peace spirit we enter into the new year, without giving away to the hope that once, one day, war may be abolished, post generations, we are able to abolish Slavery, the honor of our generation, could be that of a decisive step that abolishes war. In 2020, we have seen too much death, not to love life more, in every phase and every season. Too much war death we have seen. This is why we love life more. We need to converge all so that everyone is cared for and that all are guaranteed a peaceful future. We all await a new time, but in order for it to be new, it must be for everyone. This is the dream we want to realize, and this is why we say it together, peace in all land. Good, good, happy new year to all of you. Yes, truly. Peace in all lands. And this is why our march, uh, virtual march, leads us to countries that are different. And the first step is Africa, where peace pass, passes through taking care of those who are ill. And they accompany in this, in this march, it is Paolo Germano and Nuccia Jid. In his message, Pope Francis tells us that there's no peace without a culture of care. Culture of care to eradicate the culture of indifference, discard and confrontation, which is often prevalent today. Today, so many are suffering and dying because of the COVID pandemic that has, that has affected the whole world, but access to care is not equal for all. This pandemic, like so many others, highlights the inequalities between rich and poor, the unwinding of poverty and contagion is causing devastating consequences not only for in Europe but particularly in the poorest countries. Sant'Egidio has been committed for almost 20 years through a free health care program in Africa called DREAM to prevent and treat AIDS, TB, malaria, Ebola, malnutrition and now COVID-19. 
a program that began in the beloved Mozambique, where Sant'Egidio felt challenged by the fact that after having contributed to bringing peace to the country, a scourge worse, if possible, than the civil war that ended in 1992, after 16 years of mourning, was looming. The treatment of AIDS and other diseases has been for DREAM, starting from Mozambique and extending to 10 other African countries, a process of healing that began while listening to the silent cry of so many people who lived in shame, marginalized, judged by everyone and condemned to death by the absence of medicine and care. Men, women and children with no hope of living. That cry made us aware that medical treatment, although necessary, was not enough. It was necessary to mend the wounds, not only of the body, but also to reintegrate the sick into the family and society, to build a culture of care for health professionals and for society as a whole. Treating the sick, and not only the disease, giving dignity back to women and children, creating a community of care around the sick, to overcome the loneliness arising from stigma and return to believe in the future. Today, through the health program of Sant'Egidio, treatment is a dream come true for over 500,000 African patients. Access to AIDS drugs is no longer a taboo, but many of the diseases, including COVID-19, threaten the lives of many in Africa. One must try to look at this world as well, beyond our European crisis. It has often happened that major epidemics have manifested themselves, above all in poorer, poorer countries, making rich countries feel immune or at least indifferent to the suffering of so many. This time we're all in it, and the epidemic has shown that the virus knows no borders and that globalization is not only economic, but also diseases have become globalized. Caring for the population of one country, not caring for others, will not work. Contagion crosses borders, it travels, and you cannot live without, we cannot live forever isolated. Caring is a golden rule of our being human, and it brings with it health and hope, um, Pope Francis says in the encyclical Laudato Si. If we do not take care of each other, starting from the last, from those who are most affected, excluded, far away, we cannot heal the world. This is why care is like peace. It heals people and peoples and gives them a good future. Good morning, everyone. Here from Mozambique, Dream Center of the community of Sant'Egidio. I'm a doctor who works directly with uh, COVID positive patients since March 2020. In my country, the situation is very concerning because many uh, sick people come to the center asking for help. We have patients from South Africa. Um, those are um, people from Mozambique that are coming back for holidays from South Africa. And also another group is very concerning is the refugees uh, who come and ask for help because in the refugee camps there are no doctors and no medicines. So what is most concerning now is that uh, uh, how the, the disease is getting complicated for many who cross the countries without the testing. So the problem is that we have very few resources. What we do here in the Dream Center, we offer everyone the mask, health education, we do the swabbing. Uh, not only for the sick person, but for the whole family to tailor the treatment. So we educate to, uh, for people to understand prevention, uh, for the families, for the society, and to help others to understand the symptoms as a sign of alarm.
from Mozambique, we move in another places of the world where war has generated great pain. But where peace, it is still possible. And we are a company on this, in this trip, Daniela Pompei, who is committed in creating humanitarian corridors. In the year 2020, European countries have closed their borders even further due to the pandemic. Refugees and displaced persons have been greatly affected. Immigration routes are becoming harder and more complicated. What is happening in the Balkans, the Canary Island, Mexico, Libya and Burma is a tragic reminder of this situation. And we cannot forget what is happening to millions of people from Venezuela spread in Southern America. Some of those participate to the life of the community. In the next few years, we will see what the consequences of the pandemic will be on the poorest countries and how they will affect migration. But we cannot resign ourselves to closures that generate immense suffering. The humanitarian corridors have continued to represent a concrete way to peace and salvation for many children, women and men. In the last two months alone, more, more than 20... 250 refugees from Syria, Somalia, South Sudan and Eritrea, they have arrived in Italy and France. Those are all countries suffering from war or harsh regimes. War refugees are one of the great tragedies of our time. Most of them live in poor or struggling countries. Those who came through the humanitarian corridors left from Lebanon and Ethiopia, two countries that are undergoing a very difficult moment. Lebanon, after the terrible explosion in the port this summer that devastated half of Beirut and the spread of the pandemic, is a very impoverished country. This situation falls on Syrian refugees, more than a million. 70% of them live in extreme poverty children do not go to school and if they return to Syria they are arrested as traitors. They live as imprisoned without hope. In Ethiopia a good part of the refugees live in camps in the Tigray area where there is no war. Many of them escape to Sudan. Refugees born in the camps who have known only tents, dust, war and flight. Since 2016, with the humanitarian corridors, more than 3,500 refugees have arrived in Europe, most of them in Italy. A new agreement was signed with the Italian government last September for 300 refugees from Greece, in particular from Lesbos. In a few weeks, the first of them will arrive in Rome. The humanitarian corridors have allowed the reunification of many families. Many children haven't seen their father for four or five years, their parents, their sisters. A great deal of solidarity was manifested in the welcoming process. Those who made their homes available, those who discovered the beauty of responsibility towards others, of caring for a sick child. Solidarity has opened up creative roots of love, friendship, relationships that grow. Now we face a new challenge, that of Libya, a state considered failed, divided into many pieces by an internal war and a country of passage for thousands and thousands of refugees from Africa, the Middle East and Asia, many of whom end up in terrible and inhumane detention centers. We would like to open new humanitarian corridors for them. There are people tortured, imprisoned and sold who rightly dream for a different future. We will have to open many doors for them and it will not be easy. But working for peace also means this, never stop fighting to save lives. My name is Moshlin, I'm from Syria and I've been in Italy for two months with my husband and my daughter who's eight. We are from Alep. Um, our past is very, uh, is full of suffering. Every time that I think about Syria, my friends, uh, my city, uh, I feel so much suffering. In Syria, 
It's impossible to live. There are no medicines. There is no electricity. Uh, everything is very expensive, and the coronavirus have, has increased dramatically the suffering. My daughter was born in the war and has known nothing else than war. That's why we fled. We fled to Lebanon. In Lebanon, the life for Syrian refugees was not easy at all. We had no security and peace. And then all of a sudden I received a phone call that was a phone call from Rome that was a great sign of hope that gave us so much strength. This call was telling us that there was a, a future for us in Italy. By the end of October, we reached Italy through the humanitarian corridors. Life has changed so much and life now is happy for us. But I think with so much suffering for those who are still in Syria and Lebanon, and we hope with all our hearts that peace can arrive and many can in you know, the doors of Europe where the dream of those who are looking for a future is Lesbo. Monica Tias speaks to us about what's happening over there. Before the fire of September the 8th that devastated Moria, the camp had come to accommodate 22,000 people, a third of whom were children, and many were unaccompanied. There were Afghans fleeing violence, Syrians exiled from a war that has lasted more than 11 years, and refugees from Africa, including many women, victims of trafficking. Here they wait to hear, sometimes for years, the outcome of their application for international protection with the fear of being returned to Turkey, a country considered safe by Europe. During the summer, our first commitment was to feed everyone. We offered food and dignity to people who had not sat down to eat with their families for a long time. At the Friendship Restaurant, in compliance with anti-COVID rules, the meal is served at the table. So many young refugees from the camp serve themselves with us, overcoming the rivalries that exist between different national groups. They told us, helping others revives hope. With the unaccompanied mi minors, we experience moment of a forgotten normality, an outing, an ice cream. In fact, refugees are not even allowed to swim in the sea. And then the English courses for adults and adolescents and the School of Peace for 250 children. Many had never been to school before. What do the children of Lesbos dream of? A home and education, like Fatima, who is 11 and teaches other girls. This desire for a future must be welcomed by Europe. After the fire, the refugees left with nothing poured out onto the streets where they lived without any shelter. Today, there is a new camp that is called Moria 2.0. There are about 8,000 people left in tents a few meters from the sea. After four months, there is still no electricity and there are no showers. With every rain, the tents flood. The army distributes for food only once a day. They need everything, clothes, blankets. The situation is aggravated by a lockdown of the camps that has lasted for more than nine months. Desperation has grown. Faced with this situation, the first great dream, which is also a commitment, is to help empty the camps through the humanitarian corridors. In the coming months, 300 vulnerable people and accompanied minors will arrive in Italy. The first 30 will arrive in January. We hope that they will finally be able to start a new life and that they will find acceptance and peace. Thank you, Monica. Truly a good news that makes us begin this year with a sign of peace and hope for everyone. And let us go back in Africa, in Mozambique again, a country that we love so much that unfortunately so it's shaken by violence and then into countries where we have planted in this last uh, two months, last month, uh, uh, seeds of peace. Now the word to Chiara Torini who speaks from Nampula. Good morning and Happy New Year to, from Mozambique, the country where I'm now. In the last few weeks I've been visiting a few uh, cities and villages and uh, centers for refugees from the northern country. In the province of Cabo del Gabo, 
uh, from 2017 um, has witnessed cruel terroristic attacks from groups that the population calls al-Shabaab. The population is very poor. It's mainly uh, of, made of uh, farmers and fishermen, and they flee from these terrible terrorist attacks that have led 500,000 people to flee and the death of roughly 2,000 people. So by visiting, we have uh, seen so many dramatic situations. I've met Tina, an elderly, who during an attack, she tried to save her nephew, who was two. She was reached by terrorists, and uh, they took the Ch the child from her hands and they killed him with a machete. And I met Tina, who has witnessed the beheading of her husband. Her youngest child did not speak for months. I met another elderly on the beach of Pemba, a beach where uh, a couple of months ago, many who were fleeing arrived with small boats, and this man told us about his long fleeing through the forest and the sea, and while they were in the forest, his mother died of starvation, and so many die because of lack of food, of water, of infections. So many have been in the forest for, for weeks and weeks and walked for uh, dozens of kilometers, uh, elderly, children, uh, pregnant women. For the last months, uh, the community of Sant'Egidio have distributed food in these camps, but also in the houses where these families have been welcomed. In these houses, we have, find, we have found very difficult situations. It's very small places. Um, those are shared by 40, 50 people, or uh, homes where only elderly live or women with their children. Something that I was very touched by is the great suffering, but the great dignity of these people and the willingness to the hope for peace of all these people. As we were in a camp a few days ago, a group of people told us we want peace. We want to go back to our homes. And this cry has touched me deeply and reminds me that really, indeed, the war is the mother of all poverty, of poverties. Thank you. Thank you, Chiara. We want to talk about South Sudan, our country that the community has lost for many years, since before its independence. The first South Sudanese came to Rome in 1991. It is a long history of friendship with the people that have suffered a lot. That's why the community wanted to take up Pope Francis' invitation to support the peace process that was signed in 2018. And we wanted to involve in the peace agreement all those armed groups that have been left out. Here they are in Rome at the early next year. You know that the community of Sant'Egidio does not have any other economical, political interest in South Sudan. Our interest is your peace. And we believe that you can give yourself peace. You can you can be, be part of history as the fathers of peace in your country. And your name will be remembered as a blessing. The true victory true victory is finding what unites. And I want to remind you how Pope Francis made a gesture. He bowed in front of all the leaders, kissing them their feet. The whole world was amazed of this action. How can we not be ashamed 
when we think that South Sudan has no peace yet. We are not here to accuse each, for each other or to return on the wrongs that we suffered of the past. But we are here to listen to the call of the people of South Sudan, which is peace. It is peace. Pope Francis gave a leader to South Sudan a Bible with this dedication, seek what unites, overcome what divides. It, this phrase encapsulates the community's method for political dialogue. It is a simple method that has restored confidence to too many who did not see a possible solution to this crisis. Today, everyone look forward with hope and even more support the initiative of the community. Since the beginning of 2020, we have taken many steps forward, rebuilding trust, committing to respect the ceasefire, the different parties discussed the root of their conflict, and I would like to pass the floor to those who have been the protagonists of the Rome Initiative for South Sudan, the representatives of the government and of the opposition. We agreed on a very important step that the people of South Sudan need. The cessation of hostilities is important because it gives our people the, the silence of the weapons. It gives our people humanitarian assistance that can reach all the different rural parts of the Republic of South Sudan. It allows us to build forgiveness, reconciliation and harmony among our people. And the credit for this goes to His Holiness Pope Francis. I would like to express to him on behalf of the alliance of opposition movements and on behalf of our people, that we are ashamed. We have caused this war to our people and to each other. We are ashamed that peace has been delayed and deluded, despite not, notwithstanding your call. We heard it. Dialogue heals wounds, takes away space for violence, decreases clashes. There is still a long way to go. Weapons, which are still widespread in South Sudan, have not completely stopped firing. The pandemic interrupted for some months the political dialogue that has now started again. I would like to end by joining Pope Francis' Christmas wish to the country's leaders. It is that they grow in trust and serve people of South Sudan with greater generosity. The Central African Republic has lived in these days moment of tension because of the presidential and legislative elections. Unfortunately, some armed groups and some political parties have tried to prevent the people from voting, and there have been several clashes in the countries. Despite this, Central Africans have voted, and this is a good news in a country that has seen many, too many coups throughout its history. Santegidio, after having worked in 2013 for the Republican Pact and since 2016 with armed groups, remains at the side of Central Africa through various initiatives, both at the political and humanitarian dialogue. In particular, in the last year and a half, we wanted to support the disarmament of armed groups through the distribution of basic necessities and a work on sensitization of the population that Ibrahim from Bangui tells us about. Happy 2021 of peace from Bangui, capital of the Central African Republic. My name is Ibrahim Sanfrede, and with the community of Santa Judea, I've been committed since 2014 to peace and reconciliation. My country has experienced many painful moments where violence has gripped the lives of men and women. Many believe that a peaceful future is not possible and that the Central African Republic will always remain plagued by violence. A country of enormous wealth but extremely poor. We don't believe this. That's why we have been working to support dialogue and peace, and we have traveled throughout the country to all the 16 prefecture. It's a country which is twice as large as Italy. 
We travel throughout the country to talk about peace to everyone, especially to those who are part of armed groups. And there are 14 groups in my country. As part of the National Disarmament Group, St. Egidio supports as combatants who have for chosen for peace and have opted for reintegration in several towns and villages, Zucombo, Buar, Faro, Aba, Cui, Beloco, Caunde, and Yemigelewa. In 2021, disarmament operation will intensify because we want to write a new history of peace and development. We are marching virtually, but wholeheartedly, with you to St. Peter's Square. Peace indeed is possible. Thank you, Ibrahim. We are happy to march together with you to many Central Africans who are looking for peace. But this movement of peace involves everyone, and everyone can take part to it in every place of the world and at every age, as we will be told by Michaela from the World Youth, peace, Youth for Peace movement. Hello, everyone. I'm Michaela from the Youth for Peace of Torbella Monaca. Often at school, we're taught to read, to write, to count. Maybe we even learn a bit of education, but never anyone teaches us not to discriminate, to leave at home our prejudices together with the racist feelings. Yes, sometimes we lack someone who teaches us to live in peace. We realize this when episodes of violence occur that seems incomprehensible, like the one in which a few months ago Will Willie lost his life here near Rome. This violence is absurd, but it's not a sudden outburst. It is the fruit of a world that does not teach us to live together in peace. With the Youth for Peace, we have chosen to help anyone in need, the children, the elderly, and all who are in need. Sometimes there is a risk of getting discouraged because there are so many difficulties. But a young person who chooses peace also pushes others to make that choice. Youth for Peace are all over the world, and when every year we meet with our friends from all over Europe, we realize that peace is young. Being together gives us strength and courage, and we know that we're not alone and that peace is possible. This year, too, via web for the COVID, we learned to get out of our comfort zone to try to do as much good as possible. All this, however, we do not do alone, but we do it together through friendship. And this is what makes us truly the Youth for Peace. Even in Torbella Monaca, among the grey buildings, there's a wonderful school of peace, where children are protected, where they play and learn to be friends. I've been going to the School of Peace for two years now. When you start, you feel lost, a little out of place. You're there to help, but you don't really know what to do. But then you realize that there is not much difference between those who help and those who are helped. By now, you are part of a big family in which you grew up together. And then you realize that you have become a reference point for a child, like an older sister. Peace is also this. In a neighborhood where the lives of young people are ruined by drugs, there is a home for everyone. And the gray neighborhood becomes colorful, full of life. Thanks also to the beautiful murals, which were made a few days ago on the walls of our center. In the end, the important thing, in my opinion, is not to forget why we're doing all this. Never forget the desire to bring peace to the whole world, each in his own small way, but together with a great dream. You are part of this generation. Now look to the left, now look to the right. You got brothers and sisters by your side. Now turn to the left, high, now turn to the right. Hello, our friendship will last for, last for a lifetime. And while we approach this virtual march to St. Peter's Square, we carry in our heart the suffering of all the people and also the Rohingya people that Pope Francis remembered in his message to Christmas.
Hi, I'm Afisa. I'm 30 years old. We're 18 Amfa in my family. We came to Bangladesh from Marula in Burma three months ago. It took us 11 days to, to get here. We, go th uh, we took a boat and uh, after a night of sailing, we made it to the coast and we reached this camp. I came here today in this hospital to get treatment because I got fever and coughing and pain throughout my body. The doctor had already given me some medicines, but I ran out, so I came back. They treated me really well here. They helped me. Building peace requires the commitment of everyone, but most of all our prayer. The prayer that rises up every day, every month in the Basilica of St. Mary, Santa Maria in Trastevere, and every place where the community is present. But also the prayer for peace that sees uh, praying one next to the other people of different faith and religions, as it happened on the 20th of October in the Campidoglio Square. And now we want to listen to some words of Professor Andericadi that were pronounced in that moment. Today, Religious communities have prayed side by side. And now they are addressing to some representatives a message of peace. The great watershed of the meeting of Assisi, wanted by John de Paul II in 1986, for which we speak, sp still speak of the spirit of Assisi, was that religions did not continue to live nor to pray one against the other, as in the long centuries of extraneousness or hatred. Today, they pray side by side. From common prayer, the word gushes forth. The world is thirsty for true words that enlighten the future, which is so uncertain. In many countries, it is a critical moment in which we cannot remain silent. We must give voice and solidarity to the people impoverished by the pandemic to those who have suffered for too long, to those who suffer from wars that are still ongoing, almost all forgotten, because today we are mainly focused on our diseases or our own problems. War is the mother of all poverty, the fruits of which are also the refugees who knock on our doors. Believers and leaders of religions, different religions, have prayed together tonight. And the message that religions manifest coming together is that we are not saved alone, on our own or against the others. Not saving ourselves alone opens the way to share vision and a dream about humanity. Pope Francis wrote, we dream as one humanity, as wayfarers made of the same human flesh, as children of this same earth that is home to us all. So believers dream. They help those in need to dream of liberation from poverty, the sick, the victims of war, starting with the children, the refugees. Religions have a meaning that appears to be small, but it's great, to liberate the basis of goodness of humanity, to seek it where it is hidden. Thank you. With these words, we begin to end our March for Peace. Every year we end listening to the Holy Father, Papa Francesco, in the prayer of the Angelus from the Holy Apostolic Palace. Thank you to all of you for being united with us, and a really good wish for a 2021 of peace for everyone in all the world. Peace in all the lands.